Welcome to Recently Logged, where it's Terry time all the time. Well, hello, guys. Uh, welcome to Recently Logged, the the weekly film podcast <laughs> brought to you by people who stayed up past midnight watching the movie for this episode. <laughs> right now, we're way too tired. Now, now we're just we're just tired. Um. <laughs> Yeah, episode two of season three, though. <clears throat> yes. Uh, and we're talking about uh, one of our favorite films from last year. Yes. Of course, that's not very hard to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's there's not too many to pick from. But we already talked about Wolfwalkers, so we had to mention the other uh, highlight of last year. Right. I, th- I think Wolfwalkers was still definitely my favorite from last year. but I, I, mm, I might have to agree. I, I don't know. It's it's very very close. It would be a toss up. I don't know. I gave Wolf Walkers five stars. <laughs> I don't know. I like I said, it would be it would be so close for me. Oh, my God. you're 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 banging the microphone with your blankets over here. You're banging the microphone. <laughs> Is it that cold down here? Yes, Ruby. It's it's like fifty eight <laughs> degrees in 58 here. Fifty eight degrees. Yeah. <laughs> Keep, it's actually a meat locker that we record in. I just put my bed in here so he would think it's a bedroom. <laughs> it's cold down here, guys. Like, there's no windows or anything. It's a basement. Well, no kidding. It's a basement. <laughs> it's cold. Well, well, the heater vents right there. It's just not, just not doing anything yeah, at the be- moment. <laughs> yeah, because this room isn't picked up in any of the readings. I see. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> um. We're talking about we're talking about a movie that did invade my top four favorites back when I first watch it. Uh, first watched it on my letterbox. So uh, it did not. For me. <laughs> uh, yeah. So do we want to get into the the basic facts of of soul? Soul. Uh, sure. Let's do it. All right. So so what are the basic facts of Soul, Micah? All right. Well, Soul is a 2020 movie rated PG. It's 100 minutes. According to IMDb, it's an animation adventure comedy. And uh, it's a little description on here is after landing the gig of a lifetime, a New York jazz pianist suddenly finds himself trapped in a strange land between Earth and and the afterlife. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, its cast consists of Jamie Foxx, Tina Fey, Graham Norton, maybe? I don't know. It's got a little <laughs> thing, and it's not... Li- yeah, Norton. Yeah, uh-huh. I was about to say, it was N-O-R-T, so I mean, right. I'd assume Norton. Rachel House, um... And lots of other people. <laughs> <laughs> lots of other people. Yeah, I was about to say, if you want, if you want more like cast description and stuff, I have the top build people down in the description. Um, for anyone like listening to a platform other than YouTube, they should all be hyperlinked to the actors' profiles on Letterboxd. So you should be able to find out more information about what they've been in, that sort of thing. And hey, David Diggs features in this. Heyo, David Diggs, my it, man. It was directed by Pete Doctor and Kemp powers hmm. um, i was not aware it had a co-director neither was i but i was about to say where where is he i don't i don't think it's, i don't even think that's on letterbox told them no it's not no it's not it's, it's just, just this pete doctor yeah i was like what interesting it's this co-director on uh imdb that's very odd it was written by pete doctor mike jones and kemp powers yeah yeah and i guess i got nominated for two golden globes hey yo I mean, why not? Best motion picture animated and best original score. Bro, you know, <laughs> I don't blame I don't blame the Golden Globes for nominating. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the score's really good. <laughs> yeah. Um, are yeah, you looking that's... up? Are you gonna look up some fun facts? Like, is that what you're trying to do? Well, that's what, <laughs> see, this is supposed to be a natural transition. Oh, okay. You're supposed to pick it up because that was the end oh, of the okay. basic facts, um, and then I was gonna scroll through the trivia and try to find something interesting. Okay. <laughs> I, I apparently I lack uh, podcasting tact. Yeah. In a lot of senses. Um, what to say about soul? Uh, it, it's a it's it's nice to see. It was nice to see a Pixar movie coming out again, because like. There hadn't been one since I really got back into uh, film. 
like yeah. like uh, since I had since I had made my letterbox account, you know. <laughs> well, f- for me anyway, there hadn't been one that I'd really liked since <laughs> I got back into because w- was... Good Dinosaur was my was my like last recent no, memory t- of Toy one. Story Four. I mean... Oh yeah, Toy Story Four. Incredibles I forgot two. about Toy Story Four. <laughs> And Incredibles 2. Toy Story, Toy Story 4, Incredibles 2, Finding Dory. Oh, yeah, uh, Cars 3. I remember, Cars I remember 3, when that came out. The Good Dinosaur. Those are the recent ones. And if you look at my Pixar ranked or watch my video on my channel, M. Grayway Films, where I rank all of them, uh, those are all pr- pretty low. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. No, we're we're uh, just just as a uh, a filler statement. I thought it was I thought it was pretty cool. No, it's it's nice to see a uh, a Pixar movie coming out again, um, especially one that I feel like captures a lot more of like the Pixar Pixar the feel. Pixar the Pixar soul, if you will. Yeah, like. not like <laughs> Toy Story Four. <laughs> the Pixar soul, Micah. All right. Well. <laughs> couldn't find any interesting trivia. Oh, there's no in- fun fact, guys. There's no interesting trivia <laughs> for this movie. <laughs> nothing, right. nothing interesting even happened. It's true. It was just like they sat down and they were like, "Well, here's here's a movie." The movie. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, we're we're moving into we're moving into basic facts, Micah. Thoughts, so, you mean? Yeah, basic, we just did oh, basic, basic thoughts. <laughs> yes. I don't know why. Why do we use? Oh, that's right. Fun fact for season three. <laughs> We've changed it to opening thoughts instead of basic thoughts. Oh, have we now? So it's not as confusing. I don't think it was ever confusing. It, well, you know, some of us, Mike, <laughs> some of us people do not like having a category that starts with basic and then another segment like that starts with basic, right? Well, I think we should have three segments that start with basic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll do basic, basic facts, basic thoughts, basic discussion. Exactly. I see. Why not just put basic in front of all of our segments? It'll work just fine. Basic intro, <laughs> basic outro. Yes, exactly. All right, but anyway, <laughs> what did I think of of Pixar's Soul? Yeah, what are your what are your opening thoughts oh. on Pixar's Soul? Um, like I said, this is uh, this was a very very impactful movie back when I first watched it. Uh, we, when I think we watched it not the day of release, but it was like the week of release. It was around that time, um, but we, since it was on yeah, Disney was, Plus and everything, was, I was about to say I know it was when like around <laughs> like, very close to yeah. Christmas when we watched it. Yeah, because our uh, extended family was still here and everything, and we had all the Christmas decorations yeah, yeah. set up. Um, but yeah, no, I I really loved it. Um, it didn't quite. I, I, it didn't quite resonate with me as much on a second viewing, but I feel like that was to be expected. <laughs> uh, but you know, I I really loved it in a lot of respects. I loved the uh, I love the score, obviously. I I feel like that goes without mentioning. Jazz. I, I feel like I feel like any movie that has jazz in its score automatically jazz. has a leg up on a lot of the competition. <laughs> right, like you can't beat jazz. Um, I really loved the art direction for this movie. Like, this might be one of my favorite look, like one of the best looking Pixar movies, in my opinion. Uh, just a lot of the, especially the mixture of uh, 2D and 3D in this one is very cool as well. Um, like the line, uh, the line outlines on the soul. Um, of course, Jerry's design and Terry's yeah. design. <laughs> yeah. Um, the way it blends together is really nice. Um, a lot of the color palettes and stuff are really cool as well. A, a lot of what I like about this movie is visual to an extent because the animation just looks so good. So um, yeah, I don't know, not to, not to interject <laughs> too much. I was yeah. never a fan of, especially from like the moment I saw the trailer and everything, of like the soul world itself. Really? Besides like the bridge stuff. The bridge stuff looks really great. But I don't know, like the blue sterile world kind of is really visually sterile? unappealing to me. I don't know about sterile. It it's got like textures everywhere except for on uh the big Jerry building. <laughs> I don't know, it's just it, it, in terms of visuals, I was not a fan of uh the great before or whatever. Okay, fair enough. Seminar or whatever. Um Oh, now that you mention it though, actually, um 
I very much, uh, just just as like a fun shout out, <laughs> very much liked the uh, little bridge thing going up to the great beyond. It was very, very cool. Visually very amazing. dope. <laughs> yes. Um, what else to mention? It's a very oddly structured movie by Pixar standards. <laughs> like most most kids movies follow a very, very uh, formulaic structure. And this one is like four acts or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit odd. Yeah, no, it's uh, but I think it works uh, pretty darn well. Uh, for it trying such an unconventional structure in a kids movie you know i talk about that in my video <laughs> yeah micah micah if he seems a little uh checked out this episode it's because he's already paid his critical dues i did to say someone. my critical dues i wrote an entire <laughs> review about this darn movie yeah recorded it edited it put it up on my channel <laughs> um anything else that i want to mention on a surface level I kind of consider our our opening thoughts to be like if our friend asked us like yeah what what did you think of Soul kind of thing not supposed to get too intense yeah, yeah. just kind of like you know um your basic thoughts <laughs> what else to mention I, I want to mention like more things though because I feel like if I don't mention enough stuff they're not gonna think I liked it <laughs> you well, know too bad because if you're done with what is the natural flow then I should go all right fine you can go <laughs> all right so my basic uh. My, yeah, see my basic thoughts <laughs> on the movie. <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> Still calling it opening thoughts. <laughs> are uh, very good. Um, it's it's like, it's definitely one of my favorite Pixar movies that's come out in a while. Um, it's probably my favorite Pete Doctor movie. Uh, I think he, he rounds out what, a mm. lot of what I would consider things I didn't like about some of his former movies in this one. Yeah, I, I could definitely see you liking this compared to something like Inside Out. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, it's got jazz in it. Jazz is amazing. Uh, for anybody who, do, who doesn't know, like, jazz is, like, literally some of my favorite kind of music ever. <laughs> oh, I thought um, you were going to explain what jazz was. <laughs> oh, yeah. For any of you who don't know, um, there, there are some things that I don't like about this, mainly, like, more stuff from like the youth seminar and the soul world but most of that is fine it's not there for too long and terry's and jerry's mostly make up for it because like bro they rock terry and the jerry's are just like incredible and hilarious but um i think the story is like a like it actually tells like a really good message to the story and it's really poignant for especially somebody like around uh, young adult teenager age because it's it's definitely a lot for going into like like life. my age Micah <laughs> yeah and I actually wonder why it impacted me so much <laughs> I talked about this in my video a lot of people um talk about how like this uh inside out and up kind of make a trilogy-ish thing where it kind of covers different stages of life from different looks and different big questions about life. And, you know, I think that's a pretty cool way to look at them. Uh, I don't think it obviously changes anything about any of them. I just think it's... <laughs> it's just a cool way to, yeah, to package them. It's cool. I would love to... I would buy that trilogy in a heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> True story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't really have too much else to say in basic thoughts. Yeah. It's like... It, like he said, it's got a very uh, odd structure as kids' movies go, but I don't think it brings it down at all. I think it just... I, I just thought it was worth mentioning. It's paced a little odd compared to most like kids' movies especially. Yeah, the thing is, you can't really get into like a, a topic about this movie, like an aspect of this movie, without bringing up like a bunch of other things. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a, it's a bit difficult to just be like, yeah, I liked so here's why. The end. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I'm very curious of how this was even like we keep saying like quote unquote kids movie. <laughs> I wonder how this movie would even be like received by children. Yeah, because for real, it, it like, seems like pretty like deep. I guess it, I could say it seems it seems a lot more not like 
mature in that kind of way, but mature it's, yeah, it seems, thematically. It seems more focused on its themes I don't than think making it, I don't like know a how, kid's I, movie. I'd be curious to see how much a kid would like it. Yeah, that's, kind that's, of that's, more, that's more what I'm saying, because like, this doesn't really take much time to be a fun, like, kid's movie. You get, a f- you get like, a few minutes of kitten antics, and that's about it. <laughs> and then, like, you have, like, there's a lot of funny stuff yeah, in you get, this movie. Yeah, I was like, about the to say. Terry's the Terry and, stuff. Uh, Terry and Jerry and and like all yeah. of that but a lot of it is mainly focused on like the main story which i'm not even sure how much i would get if i was a tiny <laughs> kid <laughs> i was about to say i was kind of dumb when i was younger uh, i don't know how much of this would actually click story wise so, so yeah i don't know if you have any young kids and have watched this with soul uh how, how did how did they like it did they like it <laughs> did they like it? i don't know how do kids like inside out <laughs> Yeah, for real. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like Inside Out's a lot more accessible because it's always, like, colorful characters yeah, no, going Inside on Out, adventures. Inside Out more so It's a very this. clear plot line. They go, they get, they, they leave headquarters, they have to get back, they get back. This the thing, end. you're jumping left <laughs> this, and right. This thing, you're going everywhere. <laughs> like I said, the structure lends to it being a very uh, odd story. <laughs> But that that's discussion for later. Let's yeah. let's get into our our main discussion of of the movie Soul. All right. <laughs> Quiet Coyote, Micah. Okay, <laughs> I guess I'll stop talking. <laughs> no, <laughs> no actually, just, you just lost a co. You just lost a co. <laughs> wow. It's, it's supposed to be a fun reference to the movie, Micah. Yeah, but I don't <laughs> like that scene. Wow. Okay. Like I said, I'm really... Your killjoy, Mike. I'm really not that big of a fan of most scenes in the youth seminar. It's just Jerry's voice is so calming. No, uh, <laughs> Jerry's voice is amazing. <laughs> I could listen to Jerry's voice all day long. But <laughs> I find, like, I don't know, just visually the world and everything, and just, I don't know. I don't know what you have against it, bro. If if blue was my color, like, if that bluish green was my color, that would be my aesthetic for life. <laughs> I just am not a big fan of that blue green. It, it's just kind of harsh on my eyes. I'm not a big fan. Well, I love this look. No, but it it's, works. It's, it's it kinda, works well in the movie. It's kind of harsh on my eyes, but I love it. <laughs> wow. Uh, They're fans of neon pink, Micah. I like that's neon harsh pink. on the eyes. No matter who you are, <laughs> it's not harsh on the eyes. <laughs> no matter who you are. Uh, anyway. Do we want to get into yeah we're the, we're already doing the it. questions if you will let's do it all right um <laughs> do you have any questions I do have a question Micah wow <laughs> how do you feel um <laughs> <laughs> I do have a question uh <laughs> how do you feel the uh "Quote unquote," uh, just loose term here. Body swap stuff is handled in this because it is technically a body swap movie. If you want to get down to brass tacks, <laughs> see, I think it's one of the, oh man, this I just, movie. This movie's plot is so weird. It is. It's such a wild time. <laughs> um, I think it's. I think it's definitely one of the more unique things this movie does. But I'm not sure. I 100 percent love its execution. Just on a whole, like, real world kind of dealing with it. I suppose. Because, like, like the only thing I could say that I don't... Well, I don't really like 22 that much. <laughs> and I, I don't know, I just guess that, um... Like, with the way 22 is acting and all of that, like, how weirdly everything just kind of works in the world. <laughs> and that's really my only problem with it. Is that, like, everybody's just like, wow, you're so insightful, Joe. You're <laughs> so amazing. <laughs> and wow. it's just so weird. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like everything just kind of works a little too perfectly for 22 in Joe's body. I mean, I suppose you, could, you when, could make an argument for that. Especially when she's never, like, experienced life before. But I really don't think that's, like... A big thing. Mike's like, I can't believe they would let this happen. Listen. It like, ruined my five star movie. Like, I gave it four and a half, but I do have several tiny problems with it. It's not like, I don't think any of them are big enough to take it down because I think the main reason I gave it that is because I think its story, like, and the story it has to tell is really, really good. Yeah. Um, 
but there are some whack things <laughs> in this movie. Yeah, I was about. To, I, I guess you. I guess I could see your argument for things working out a little too well for for twenty two. <laughs> like, it, it, and it's not like I said. It's not a big thing, but like even in like the barber when she starts talking about like <laughs> we, nobody would react like that to that. Someone might think it. She's like, I, I was an unborn soul living for most of my life or something. And everybody's like, wow, yeah. 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 <laughs> Give me a lollipop. <laughs> and that, that joke is still really funny. Though. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just a bit odd. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I can see that. I don't know. I feel like a lot of the story around 22 kind of works like that. And I think that's one of the big problems just I have. It just comes off as a little, like, this is happening because the story needs it yeah, to happen like, kind of like, feel. My biggest problem with the movie overall is probably 22 as a character. And the the, the core of the movie, Mike? <laughs> well, no, I like what they did with, like, that whole side of it. But, like, her as a character... Like, I, I don't mind the story, like, the point they're trying to make with their character. And I even talked about it in my video. Like, I think what they do and what the, how they bring together both Joe and 22's, like, life lessons work really well. I and I think the way say. those tie in at the end, I'm, I love that. Chef kiss, my man. <laughs> but 22 as a character voiced by Tina Fey. <laughs> yeah, I think I could have done without Tina Fey's performance. <laughs> um, and, like, just everything around 22 seems so, like, I don't know, I guess contrived to me. Like, even from her not wanting to, like, get her Earth pass, like, everything about 22's character just seems to me, anyway to be happening just because they thought it was a good idea for a character not because it was like a a fleshed out character i suppose i i could see that for some stuff i would i would argue against it like sometimes but i don't know it, it's kind of i i can see where you're coming from. yeah like i said it's not a huge like if it was like a huge problem i wouldn't <laughs> like it's like every single thing about 22. i wouldn't resonate with the character as much as she's I do just by a the plot end. device man so awful <laughs> just a plot device no i think i think there's definitely some merit to the character i just feel like way too much of it like just kind of works too well yeah i could see that for the story that's happening and fair enough yeah, I say. I guess that's not a big thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do Do you have a question that you would wanna that you wanna you wanna chuck into the the cosmos <laughs> of questions? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> we'll do a classic. No, not a classic. <laughs> a classic, <laughs> Ruby. We ask it every week. Okay. Literally every week. <laughs> and you never have. I an don't answer. have a prepared answer. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite scene? Or sequence. Ugh. I don't know. <laughs> um, um, but it would be, you know, when they play the jazz gig if they didn't cut it off. <laughs> you just you just really wanted them to play the entire jazz show. In I the would movie. be t- so down for them I'm playing telling the you, they entire should, jazz show. Like when they release it on Blu-ray or something, they probably already have. Um, they should have, like, the entire jazz show as a special yeah, feature. Yeah, because it would kill the pacing of the <laughs> It ending, would destroy the pacing. But I want the jazz show. Like, I came in for this movie for jazz, and then, like, it's like, all right, jazz show, and then it's like, cut, cut, cut. Oh, wow. (laughs) Yes. That's literally how it goes. It's literally what it sounds like. (laughs) Bang, bang, bang. That's literally what it sounds like. All right. Favorite scene. It's so hard to pick. Like yeah, actually, one, I don't. I don't have a specific one already picked out for this one. I gotta think about it. But this this movie is a lot weirdly <laughs> weirder structured than most. Yeah, like usually so you a lot of the like... scenes kind of flow. Like it's kind of a constant flow of scenes. There's not especially like, oh, here's this scene. Um, what would hmm. be a good pick actually? <laughs> like. I don't know, man. It's it's so it would be so difficult to just pick out like one scene or sequence, right? Um, man, dang, bro! Wow, you had to stumble. <laughs> what us happens like this? in this movie? You know, like everything yeah, exactly. flows like, into it. There's no like, oh, here's this scene where this happens. Um, I think I think I have mine now. Okay. I think when Joe initially spoiler alert dies. <laughs> 
I never saw it coming in the trailers. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that that if I'm allowed to do that sequence when he first dies, so like full can, bridge can I do to like, use yeah, seminar, bridge to you seminar. Can I can I have yeah, that? Yeah, that's a sequence. Okay, it's. <laughs> That was what I was going to lean towards, but yeah, that's a okay. sequence. Um, I was going to say just compile all of Terry's scenes and make it <laughs> make that a scene, <laughs> and that'll be my see, favorite scene. See, the thing with this movie is, like, with the way it's structured and the way it's constantly bouncing between things, it doesn't leave a whole lot of time for, like, a scene to be, like, like oh, this is the scene where this happens. It's constantly propelling forward. Which is not to say that there are, are never, like, it's not like, yeah, it's, it's not, not like it never takes time to do a scene. No, it's but. not, it's that all of the scenes that it does do, which are good scenes, aren't, like, especially, like, oh, here's that scene where they did this <laughs> thing. It's like, oh, it's that scene. It's that scene, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just all kind of leading forward aggressively, if you will. Yes. Um, But, yeah, that scene is, like, really well animated. I really like the the sequences especially when he falls off the bridge that stuff looks so cool i would have loved to see it in a in a theater man right i would have rocked um, <laughs> i'm trying to think of like what i could use as a different answer <laughs> trying to work through the plot because like yeah, you know like... he you know to school he gets a permanent <laughs> job and then he's there he's spoiling the entire movie he curly <laughs> falls he's like hey I got shout out to curly right <laughs> shout out to curly on the drums <laughs> <laughs> uh then they get a gig i still like, love his little like celebration day <laughs> right <laughs> then he gets the gigs and he dies <laughs> then he di- <laughs> then he's in the soul world he runs he gets the youth seminar then it's a bunch of 20 20- yeah i i don't know i really probably my favorite senior sequence is either like the end stuff yeah like uh, right at the ob- end ob- with, ob- like, Mike. <laughs> with 22 headed uh, to earth and then like the whole I don't know what I'm gonna do with my life or whatever <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do with my um, life but yeah either the ending or the whole even even as far as from like when he gets the gig to the youth seminar yeah I okay. think that's like the the best overall like thing I could point out specifically all right, well, I'll accept that. I'll allow it. <laughs> but his like, if there's so many like 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 moments. Yeah, there's that are so really many good, small moments that are so like good. I don't I don't know if I could say like that it was like my favorite scene. Like I love the scene where he auditions. Uh, but I wouldn't like. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure I would call that my favorite scene. I don't <laughs> exactly. Know. Like there's there's so many like really good moments throughout this movie that just stick with you and are really really like just really good moments yeah uh but like there it's uh, finding a fully formed scene that stands out from the rest is a bit difficult yeah you know this movie is actually kind of hard to talk about no it is a little hard to discuss (laughs) actually because there's always like i said when you bring up something you bring up a bunch of other things right this movie is very condensed it's very compact very it's a it's it's a very in depth movie. Yeah, <laughs> it's thick. It has a, it has a it has a surprising amount of nuance for a kids movie, Mike. <laughs> a kids movie. A kids ha, movie. We don't kids. do we don't do those on the podcast. Right, we did their. We only blood, do their no. movie blood. <laughs> right, you gotta do the. Uh, <laughs> we gotta do the intense dramas. <laughs> where's Where's Daniel Day Lewis, Mike? Right. <laughs> Although I will gladly switch out Daniel Day Lewis for David Diggs. <laughs> Dang. In almost any context, except in almost for any Daniel context. Plainview. <laughs> I was about to say, like, like in all contexts, <laughs> but there will be blood. I would, I would also switch out uh, Daniel Day Lewis. Uh, I would switch him out for David Diggs any day. <laughs> yes. Okay. Something, something we must talk about. Something that must be talked about, Mike. <laughs> yes. Uh. <laughs> This is a representation. There, there are representation of of colored people on the screen, yes. which is something very rare for Pixar. Very rare for Pixar. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's always a white protagonist. Right. <laughs> Usually a male. Uh, we still got a male protagonist, which uh, Disney Disney needs to take a take a note from Ghibli and start getting some female protagonists. <laughs> right. I mean, we 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 had, we had the Coco. 
Yeah, that's true. Coco, Coco was very cool. We had, I, we had Coco. Would it? We, had, we have Brave. We had Brave. They're they're all. I mean, white, they're all white, but at least they're not they're, Americans. But they're the whitest of white. It's true. They are the whitest of white. <laughs> but still, no offense to like I, Ireland and Scotland <laughs> and all that. I think I think it's awesome. I just think like very dope. Yes. They're, they are definitely white. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. I, I, I just wanted to bring up people of color representation in a Pixar movie. I think it's pretty sick. I, I think it is sick. I just feel like something that I wanted to bring up is this is very much a Pete Doctor movie. Yeah. And Pete Doctor is it very, is, very white. It is pretty odd. Like, I thought it was odd going into it that Pete Doctor was, like, the one directing... Yes. Uh, like... Pixar's first like mainly black led uh, movie like movie and yeah I was, I was about like, to say a majority of the cast is people of color it's very like very much so um, and I feel like I, I saw someone on Twitter which is never a good thing <laughs> I saw someone on I, I asked them Twitter. very quickly to get off Twitter <laughs> um, <laughs> but after that I saw their tweet uh, and they were saying it's interesting that Soul uh, is black people written for white people <laughs> to to watch yeah kind of thing and i very much I, I very much get where they're coming from no i could definitely see that <laughs> vibe coming from it like i like that they like, that there's obviously pixar representation exactly. but it's kind of like the whole goes back to like disney with the like the moana thing yeah if exactly you're if your like production that. isn't mostly whatever race you're representing it it just it's feels gonna come off as a little weird not bad it doesn't have to be bad yeah it's just gonna be a little disingenuous to the culture yeah i was about to say it it very much like i like i i, I like all of the, <laughs> the representation in it and that like everything like that but it you can very much tell that it was written to appeal to the most people yeah as like as possible no i think i think it's cool and i'm glad pixar did it um but i do wish there was more like i, I wish it was actually yeah, in the production yeah i because, wish it like, was more like I, I mean there is obviously a black screenwriter on this yeah um i just wish it was more being told by them you know yeah it, it just feels very pete doctor <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in a lot of senses <laughs> Yeah, um, that's but you know, like I don't know, I, what do I have to say on it? I'm I'm white as can be, right? <laughs> what what am I saying? So yeah, take our opinions yeah. with a grain of salt. We're just a bunch of white guys. <laughs> I was about to say, literally, I, when the when the survey question comes up, how would you describe your ethnicity? I'm like, literally, the, as white as it comes <laughs> on every every front. Uh, but yeah. yes. Um, but speaking of like the the diversity and one thing though one thing that I I liked and I saw that a lot of other people seemed to like mm -hmm. as well was um, the actual character designs themselves because yes. uh, they weren't just like oh look it's just the same person <laughs> the but same with a skin the swap. same the same character model but they turned down, <laughs> they turned down right. the brightness um, and I thought all of the character models looked great. I really, yeah, I no, was very I, happy with how they turned out. And I saw some people on, once again, on Twitter, very, <laughs> very quickly told them to get off Twitter. <laughs> um, I saw some people complaining about how the character models looked. And honestly, I really liked them in this. Yeah, I was about to say, what, I don't... they're kind of unique for Pixar, um, like a stylistically. Um, I honestly can't think of another Pixar movie that has this sort of uh, like modeling to it like design yeah no the, it's it's definitely an interesting style going into it but i really like what ended up coming out yeah no it's i i, I mean i like it <laughs> it's very cool very dope all right well um i did say art direction and stuff was one of my favorite features of this movie which kind of kind of is adjacent to character design and stuff like that yeah all right what do you think of like the main plot of the movie what actually happens in the movie yeah like what what actually goes down um you know i actually really dig the the plot of this movie on multiple levels <laughs> uh <Would> those levels be <laughs> what what do i say about the plot of this Apparently um, you dig it on multiple I levels. do dig it. I very much, I, I especially like, I, I don't know, I really like the message that this movie has. No, yeah, that's, 
That that's honestly probably the thing I like about it the most. Same, but um, like outside of the message. Yes. The, what actually happens in the movie? I I have to say I'm not a huge fan. Like I think it works really well uh, for what they needed to happen. I'm not a ginormous fan of the whole. Uh, my soul's stuck in a cat thing. Right? <laughs> um, like, just on a conceptual level. Um, but I, I think they executed it just about as well as they could have. Um, and I'm I'm oh so glad we didn't get, like, half an hour of a cat antics. Right? See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, there's so much, uh, and just for me personally, that I feel like I don't like coming into it concept-wise, like characters like 22 and plot points like the cat, but it's all executed exactly, so yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, like like conceptually, <laughs> I would hate 22. <laughs> like as a like, it, she would just be really annoying. Yeah. In the movie, but they they handle her with a lot of tact in yeah, the actual like, screenplay. There's so many things about like the story and everything and I'm just like, wow, I really don't <laughs> like that. But like they they execute everything so well that I still really like the movie. Like I would I actually kind of usually would hate plot points like them accidentally landing into the wrong bodies. <laughs> That's like really like come on. But like they actually do it in a decent way and they tie it into the story so well mm -hmm. with what they were trying to say. Like I don't know. It's, th that's why, th I think that's the biggest reason Soul is hard to talk about for me personally. Like, uh, if I'm not, like, in a strictly writing standpoint. Yeah. Um, Just in a discussion. Yeah, in a discussion standpoint, because, like, so much of this is stuff that I don't personally, like, I wouldn't have personally chose for the movie. Yeah. But I still think it works. It wouldn't have been my first choice. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't have been my first choice for a lot of the stuff in this movie. Um, Plot-wise, I think it's a very gutsy move to uh, kill off your main character <laughs> within the first, like, 12 minutes of your movie. <laughs> right? Uh, I think I think the way he dies, he dies is kind of <laughs> kind of disappointing. What? I mean, all the other fun ways he could have died on screen. I'm like, they had to preserve his body. <laughs> That's true, but, like, he could have slipped on the banana peels and fallen <laughs> the onto the nails. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I love that that was one of the first sequences Pete Doctor made, like, storyboarding. Right? It was just him almost dying. <laughs> yeah. Oh... Uh... Did you want him to fall into the nails, Micah? Sure. I don't really feel like that would have killed him immediately, though. I feel like he would have had to, like, bleed out right, first. he would have been just bleeding out on the sidewalk or something. <laughs> at least at least with the... Uh, and just... then he couldn't just hop back into his butt. <laughs> I was about to say, at least falling into the manhole cover, he could just be, like, unconscious or something. Yeah, that's really the only one that works <laughs> that he could be. Because even in, in, like, Soul, he's not, like, fully dead for some reason. Exactly, like, He yeah. still has a heartbeat going and everything. He's, st he's still going. He's, yeah. in a, he's in a coma, essentially. Yes. A very, apparently a very, very uh, deadly coma. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, I don't... Like, what would have happened if his soul just... Would have, like, what, what would have happened to his body? Would have it just, like, does the heart stop just, like, when your soul gets destroyed? <laughs> and then what about the cat? I don't know, Does man. the cat just die when Joe hops out of the it? Castle. Because the cat's soul is dead forever. Yeah, I don't know, man. I I just yeah, we we we're just assuming uh, on a base level that cats can survive without a soul, which they can. Yeah, real I mean, life. Um, yeah, I mean, have you seen a cat with a soul? I don't think so. <laughs> it's once in a lifetime. <laughs> wow. Uh, can you tell we're dog people? <laughs> I prefer up because it has a dog instead of a cat. Right. It's the reason up up is objectively better than soul. Actually, no, I like soul better than up. What? Yeah, me too. But <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Because in like discussion of the movie, like for for even like the, the soul world I'm not a huge fan of. Like the design of the souls themselves I don't like I don't at know all. What you have against them. I think they look really bad. And I think they're really basic. I think they look really bad. And I don't like the comedy that they do with, like, the soul what? people themselves. Like, the whole, like, slapping and, like, what? the pooping pizza and... What? Okay, I'm not going to defend the pooping pizza too much, but but <laughs> what? <laughs> On the whole. Like, I don't know. Like, I think... And again, again, I think it works well in the movie. <laughs> I still gave this movie four and a half and will stand by that four and a half. <laughs> 
but I think like the blue world with all the blue blobs. I, have, I think it rocks. I don't. I, I'm, it doesn't connect with me. I don't have any. I really like. If it wasn't for the fact of how they wrote twenty two, I wouldn't care for anything in the soul world at all. Like, what about I Jerry connect. and Terry? No, Jerry and Terry would be funny, <laughs> but I'm saying like I wouldn't care about okay. anything. Like, it, I wouldn't connect with anything in the soul world because it's all just like it, it. It reminds me of Inside Out with its world of just like uninteresting, unappealing blue fuzz. How dare you! First of all, how dare you! <laughs> Second of all. How dare you? <laughs> uh, My two favorite Pixar movies. I'm not, I'm not. A, I'm not an Inside Out fan. <sighs> <laughs> you need to become more of a Pete Doctor stan, Micah. No, I your don't. life will be better. <laughs> He's one of the. He, I, I think he is probably one of my favorite directors working today. That's a shame. He just he just writes such good stuff, and then directs it so well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Monster Sync's pretty good. Monster. Mm. <laughs> Monsters Inc. Soul's pretty good. Soul rocks. Monsters Inc. rocks. Up's okay. Up is really, really good. <laughs> Inside Out is kind of. Inside Out is literally the perfect screenplay, and I'll stand by that. <laughs> yeah, well. Hey, that was episode one. If you guys want to hear our thoughts on Inside Out, go go to episode one, season one, <laughs> recently. I wonder on. how rough that would be, man. <laughs> going back to episode one. It's probably better than this. We've been well, we've been we've been flailing all over the place. This oh, episode. like I said, this is a really hard one. to Mostly, talk about. I've been flailing. All over yeah, the I don't know what you're episode. talking about over here. <laughs> I think I think they should all just stop the podcast, go to M. Grayway Films on what? YouTube, and watch my review and ranking video. Yeah, the link's in the description to his channel if you want to check it out. Plus, there's a giveaway going on. on, on, on can I enter in the channel? giveaway? Yeah. I can? Yeah. Oh. I don't know if I really want to. Well, all you have to do to enter in is be subscribed, <laughs> is be subscribed and then comment on the video once we get to the... To, to the <laughs> subscriber point. Oh my God. You're like, all you have to do to enter the gift is subscribe. Wow. wow. <laughs> all right. Well, um, what what else to ask about this movie? Um, one one of my favorite aspects of this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a statement, not a question. <laughs> mm -hmm. But what do you think of this aspect? The lighting, the the actual like lighting and stuff. Yeah, it's okay, I guess. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's I, okay. I didn't think it was really a standout lighting. I think it looks good, but it didn't like bring much to the film for me. You know, it was it was lighting. Okay. I mean, I I just think it's interesting how they differentiate critical moments with lighting. Yeah, I don't know. In a lot like, of different like ways. Like really, really, the only times lighting is stand out to me are in like. There will be blood. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Okay. I don't really like lighting. Is it really something I like? I, I don't like bad lighting. Bad lighting is awful. Mike is like I love bad light. <laughs> but like I don't know, lighting is just you know it's lighting. It should be it should be good. Wow. Going into it, everything should be good. <laughs> Mike. Yeah, but like <laughs> writing and directing and all that side of stuff is like hit or miss. But like. Hit or miss. I lighting. guess I never miss. Lighting it should be good. It's huh. lights. All right. Fair enough. That's... Yeah, I don't know. It's just never something I would consider like a favorite part of a film. I just think. Dang. <laughs> and, I, and, and I don't think there was really any standout. Because like I said, I, I don't like how bright and constantly just bright the youth seminar is. I don't know what you have against the youth um, seminar, man. But I do like how it contrasts with the... Um, the uh what is it, like, is it like the astral plane or whatever i don't know <laughs> probably i think that sounds right <laughs> you know the the zone the zone the record. zone yeah <laughs> and how the zone is all dark with the purple sand it's like they just turned the soul world they just turned on dark mode <laughs> right they turned on dark mode in the soul world i do like that that contrasts <laughs> but uh yeah i don't think there's any standout lighting like in the new york side of anything Besides, I, like yeah. in the jazz clubs, I would just I would just cool. like to mention that uh, the Great Beyond portal thing is one of my favorite set pieces from like any movie <laughs> that I can think of in recent times. It's just so visually appealing, man. Oh yeah, it looks cool, but I don't know about favorite set piece. <laughs> well, I mean, what else just, would you call just, it? Like it <laughs> just runs away and then falls off. Well, yeah, but like, what else would you call it? Like that's a set piece. Like just. A, 
cool visual. It's a cool, yeah, it's a cool visual. It's it's one of my favorite visuals. I think it looks sick. Movie. It's very dope. <laughs> it looks amazing, honestly. And hey, I use it in my video. Pete Doctor was drinking the genius juice, Mike. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Just uh, sure, Mike. Yeah. Okay. I don't know this movie. Like, I really this movie is so weird for me. Oh, we haven't asked Micah. Uh, what do what do you think about the score? We we haven't really talked about it much. The score <laughs> um, is very very good. Uh, it balances well between like a more inside out style score. Yeah, like to, kind of um, that ambient synthy yeah. uh, kind of chiming score that to Inside Out has. Jazz. And it's jazz. some really nice jazz. <laughs> some really nice the score jazz. is, oh man, the jazz. I was over there like jamming out because well, <laughs> while we watched this last night, since I had watched it several times before, um, I was uh, doing some stuff, and I just started, like... <laughs> I was doing some stuff. I was working on projects. I was doing some drugs, uh, yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Recently logged for, like, the 16th time since Robbie <laughs> insists on making drug references, does not endorse He said I was drugs. doing some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> projects. Yes. Um, I was jamming out to the jazz in the score. Yeah. Heck yeah. I want to get this... I want to get this on vinyl soundtrack on vinyl yeah i mean they it's one of the first advertised things for it because they're like hey hey vinyl you're supposed to get jazz on vinyl right (laughs) it's more expensive (laughs) you better do it but yeah no i think i think i really like it's interesting that they had three composers but i think it helps them balance uh doing the like really combining the two yeah it's a very score it's a very unique score in a lot of ways because it does it does combine two different styles of music like the actual like cinematic kind of ambient chimey uh score and then jazz jazz (laughs) (laughs) yeah like you could go from a song like epiphany from the soundtrack which is like the the very ambient, that's like the biggest <laughs> the very um, ethereal track yes. yeah and then go to like um born to play and <laughs> somehow they work well together through transition of music and everything in the movie yeah no i could very easily see why this got its uh golden globe nomination for best score no i think i think the score was definitely one of the best things that this movie had going for it yeah no very 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 cool but yeah um <laughs> so so for me like like standouts are like most of the visuals the score and specifically like the the, the story or message this has to tell essentially yeah. what what do you think of the story or message or whatever you want to call it of the, the this movie the epiphany of the movie the like epiphany. a Pete doctor movies always have an epiphany <laughs> yeah except for monster sink monster sink what no, it's all about the conflict of uh, being an adult, uh, like being a parent, more specifically, in in a work environment. That's what it's all about. Yeah, but it doesn't have. It's not the same as these. Wait, like up what? inside out, up inside out, and soul are like just like wow. Here is a question. Let's answer it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yes, um, what do I think of of the message of the movie? Yeah. What do you what do you, what do you think of like the way it ends off and everything? Um, the way it ends. Uh, I was like, how does it end? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> there's still, you know, there's still a lot of people that theorize that Joe actually is dead and the great beyond is him living a, fulfill- a fulfilled life. That sort of thing. I've, I've seen that some places. I don't know if I totally agree with no, that. I think that's kind of stupid. <laughs> <laughs> he never goes into the little the little bug trap thing. The, bu- so the bug zapper. He does not get zapped. I see. The bug zapper for souls. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't agree with that. I don't one. know. There. There are some people who who prescribe to that theory, Mike. Well, uh, I disagree. <laughs> okay. Um. What do I actually think of the message of this movie? I think it's a insanely important message because see i think uh, uh, just to comment on that because i just thought of why i I don't like that is that i feel like it takes away from the lesson that joe learns because at that point everything's just working well because it's the afterlife now i mean yeah i suppose (laughs) but i mean he still learned his lesson yeah but it doesn't matter anymore (laughs) still had his big revelation it completely loses its uh, purpose because he would be just it's dead. purpose, Micah. It's spark. It's spark, if you will. 
Wow. Uh, but yeah, no, I don't. I don't like that. That kind of defeats. Okay. The well, purpose I, of I just, Joe I just thought it was interesting to bring up. I always like bringing up theories about ends of movies. Well, and stuff. I disagree. I strongly. Disagree. I strongly disagree. <laughs> um, I like I said. I think it's an insanely important message. I feel. I feel like this is a movie I would put on movies everyone should watch. Yeah. Uh, like if I if I had to make like I you know I probably should make this at some point a movie <laughs> uh, like a hundred movies to watch before you die kind of list. Yeah. This should be on there. Like I um and I and I think I talked about it in my video like how there's two main like they go in like they flow into each other essentially but mm-hmm. there's two main like points that the movie gives the revelations both for, Mike. Both for 22 and for joe yeah because we have two main characters yeah. in this case and i think the like i said the way those go together and go into each other it's really really cool <laughs> yeah and um they both like speak to a lot of the same things and like it's kind of insane like how much especially from what i've seen like for like i said teenagers young adults that sort of thing and it's the kind of stuff that is like really kind of a lot to go into you know like a lot of people struggle with the stuff that's in this going in and growing up in life and i think it's a really good way to look at all of it and i think it's something that is accessible for pretty much anybody yeah I think it's interesting to note, you could almost consider this a coming-of-age movie. <laughs> right? <laughs> Even though no. it's about a guy in his, like, 30s or right? something. Right. <laughs> I was thinking about this while writing my video. I'm like, this is kind of like the coming-of-age midpoint. Because like, when I was talking about how, like, it kind of works into a trilogy, uh-huh. I was like, this would be like... <laughs> the middle like oh growing up movie yeah not, exactly. like going into adulthood movie for some reason not i like... mean you could you know it, it's very easy to see why with 22 actually like coming of age technically yeah. like quote unquote being a soul and being ready to go on and actually live on the earth yeah but i don't know it's it's just interesting i just thought it was funny <laughs> to think about a coming of age no, movie it is. where it's about a 30 year old guy <laughs> it is kind of interesting because like inside out you know you got like the beginning of life, <laughs> then up you've got like the end everybody of life. dying, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then um, soul is like coming of age, <laughs> and and then kind of also dealing with like um, midlife burnout, if you will. <laughs> I was about to say there's always it's this is pretty much. Uh, the song Quarter Life Crisis by <laughs> Judah and the Lion. This, 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 this movie is the definition of quarter life crisis. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, also midlife crisis as well, but you know, uh, slightly different. <laughs> more more of a quarter life crisis energy, <laughs> but in the age range of a midlife crisis. Wow. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure I have... I don't know. I'm not sure I have too much. Of, ah, this movie is so hard to talk about. <laughs> yeah. See, this is why I didn't want to. This is why you didn't want to do. This is why soul. I didn't want to do. I didn't, yeah, Micah, Micah fought tooth and nail to not do soul on the well, podcast. Well, I had done a video about it, <laughs> and I, I I predicted this. How I it just, would be hard I just to talk really, about. I just really wanted to talk about it because, like I said, we not only did a Pixar movie come out while we were on our hiatus for uh, uh, the podcast season two, that all that. Um, it was one of my favorite movies of last year and we didn't get to talk about it. Yeah, but it's such a, it's such a weird movie that like, if you don't, if you haven't watched Soul and you're listening to this, you probably don't like understand (laughs) what the heck we're we're talking about about, or, or, or what I mean by the fact that it, that it comes off as so weird. Like the, it's just such a unique movie. It is a very, and, it's and a it's, very one of a kind movie. And it's not in a bad way, but it's just in such a weird way. <laughs> like I said, I gave this four and a half, and I will stick with that four and a half unless something drastically changes in my mind about this movie. But it's just such a weird movie to talk about, and there's such weird levels of weird decisions and odd structure, and just. It, it, it combines and yet it all works where, yeah. so well yeah <laughs> and that's what's that's it's greater than the sum of its parts <laughs> definitely <laughs> it's so weird i don't know it's so hard to talk about yeah but i mean i feel like any movie that has that sort of greater than the sum of its parts quality to it is always hard to discuss because you in reality you're you you try and dissect a technical aspect of it that plays into its overall like greatness you know right like i think i think the the biggest the biggest thing with soul 
is the message it has to tell. I think that's the best thing it does. I think everything in the movie plays into that really well. But I also think, like, that talking about, like, the more technical sides of things, it's hard to talk about (laughs) because it's a very, very weirdly structured movie. It's got weird comedy. It's got (laughs) weird characters. It's got a soul of a guy falling into a cat. (laughs) It's just... All right, all right, all right. Uh, but uh, not to cut you off, but, but yes, I I see what you're saying. Okay, here's the question though. What was the cat's soul <laughs> in the cat, and then Joe fell in it, pushing it out onto the bridge? So did he murder the cat's soul, <laughs> or did the cat just die? He had a heart attack right and died <laughs> right as Joe landed. <laughs> <laughs> that would I, I, I would be we need to we need to get Pete Doctor here we need to ask and ask Pete him Doctor. and ask him what happened to the cat. What happened soul. to the cat? <laughs> did Joe push it out, or did he die right before? <laughs> we'll never know. But is Joe the cat murderer? <laughs> the cat murderer. <laughs> but then he became the cat. Like, and then he became the cat. You have to become the. It's cat. all part of his game. All right. That's how he gets his kick. All right, last question before we go into closing thoughts, Michael. All right. What's your favorite uh, Terry gag <laughs> throughout the movie? Ooh. <laughs> there are so many good ones. I think I think my favorite <laughs> is when she's going off about, uh, or rather, how would you say that? Since, what? Since the Terrys and Jerrys technically don't really have They don't a have gender. a gender, just they. Yeah, okay. So yeah. <laughs> when they... <laughs> Uh, when they're going off about uh, we're going about uh, how the, so this, <laughs> what the accountant you... thing oh. <laughs> and <laughs> counting and, and the blinking six. Six. <laughs> the six the six gag is very funny <laughs> counted on, he blinked five times since I've started talking six, six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think I think that like that whole sequence of like <laughs> her uh, uh, her is they they <laughs> like it's so hard to say the pronouns like the a, pronouns i you know should be used to it by now i geez. know i just don't usually say they referring to one person mm. <laughs> and um i mean you could just call you just call terry <laughs> terry yeah <laughs> taking a lot switch oh yeah terry yeah. would uh they're going off about um <laughs> like yeah just the count being off and everything like that <laughs> That scene is so funny. There's so many any, other... Literally any scene with Terry is right, so funny. There's so many other good bits <laughs> with Terry. Terry's the peak of comedy in this movie. It, like, honestly, one of the funniest characters ever put to screen, I think. <laughs> I, I, I'm not, I'm not right. even joking. <laughs> and um, it's, it's, it's funny to me, too, that the, uh, the voice actress who plays uh, Terry uh, <laughs> plays an almost similar character and hunt for the wilder people <laughs> pretty much pretty much if if, if the character if her character from hunt for the wilder people was a uh, like soul uh cosmic power it, it would be terry right <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like wow when it first started i was like wait a minute is that wait a minute is that what's her face from what for the wilder people and then i looked it up and it was and i was like ah we should we should watch hunt for the wilder people it's a good movie. it's such a good movie it's, it's probably my favorite taika watiti movie yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's probably my favorite too. <laughs> Mike up pauses. Yeah, <laughs> I had to think about all the Taika Waititi movies I've seen. Ah, dang! I can't wait to watch Boy. But anyway, <laughs> let's go on to our our closing thoughts for Soul. Closing thought. Closing thoughts. Ricky Baker. Ah, uh, no, Ricky, Ricky Baker. Ah, uh, Ricky Baker. Can't just uh, you can't just start Ricky. singing songs. <laughs> Baker, <laughs> Wait, you don't even have a MIDI keyboard. What are you doing? I don't have a MIDI keyboard. It's not the same. Yeah, Ricky, Ricky, now you. Are. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. What, what did you? Uh, what are your closing thoughts? If you had closing to, if you thoughts. had to wrap it all up in a few, in a few short, sweet statements. All right. My closing thoughts for this movie are that it's a really good movie and really <laughs> important, but it's definitely not my favorite movie by far. I think it's got a lot of merit within the story it's wanting to tell and the message. And I think it's honestly one of the best messages that, like, a Pixar movie has brought, <laughs> especially in recent times. Oh, yes. Um, what was Cars 3 again? <laughs> what was Toy Story 4? <laughs> what was Toy Story 4 again? <laughs> um, but, again, a lot of the elements and creative decisions just personally aren't my favorite. 
I don't think any of them bring away from the movie too much. It's definitely not there for like a five star for me, and it probably never will be. No, I could never see this. I as don't a think five star. I don't think I could get past all of the creative decisions that I'm not like the biggest fan of. But I don't think they pull away from why I think this movie is so good and why I like it as much as I do. And I definitely think it was one of the best movies of 2020. Well, there you go. Uh, can I just say did <laughs> no? <laughs> no, no. Um, I definitely agree with the last part. It's one of my favorite movies of 2020. Wolfwalkers um, is better. <clears throat> Wolfwalkers is better. I will say that. Go watch Wolfwalkers, people. Um, like Micah said, it definitely has its flaws. I think. Honestly, the reason it would go on the 100 movies to see before you die list if I were to make one is strictly because I, I feel like it's a message. If you are a human being, you need to you, you should you should somehow receive this message right. <laughs> that this that this movie is trying to say. Um, and I honestly think that that's why it's so like without that, it would just be kind of a messy movie about. A body, like a body swap, a messy body swap. Right, movie. like yeah. If it didn't have that point in question, that's mildly funny. Yeah, I think it would be kind of. It like would just a, be pointless. Like it would be like a probably like a three, three and a yeah, half star no. movie that like, um, because it wouldn't have a point to it. Yeah, but it wouldn't uh, have something to tie it all together. How to, how to sum up what I think about this? I I don't know. It just this movie impacted me so deeply back when I first watched it. And I hate that it lost some of its uh, luster on the second viewing. I don't know what word I was trying to find there. <laughs> I, I hate that it lost some of its luster on a second viewing because I, I, I hate it when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I love a movie and then I watch it again. I'm like, oh, that wasn't really as like amazing as I remember it being. But I still I still think it's a very important movie that I will I, I will always remember that first time I watched it. It's very, 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 imp- very critical character moment for my character. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I'll write that down in the character of Robbie. <laughs> but yes, that, that 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 pretty much sums it up. I don't know. We've we've yeah. we've discussed pretty much. Go every watch Soul. Now. Yeah, go watch Soul. Uh, if you if you don't already uh, have Disney Plus, uh, go do the free trial so you can watch Soul. It's hard. It's and nothing hard, else. It's don't hard watch to talk about. Else. And if and if anybody is <laughs> listening to this without uh, without watching Soul, um. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, don't just watch the movie. Go watch You'll get it. <laughs> yeah. um, if you are going to, if you are going to do Disney Plus, though, watch Gravity Falls as well. That's the only other. Thing. <laughs> That's the only other thing you should you should make a point. There's to see. stuff on Disney. I Plus mean, there's a few good. other things. There's a few other things. <laughs> well, uh, right. no, there are there are a lot of other things, <laughs> but I did it. Sponsored by Disney Plus. <laughs> this, this episode brought to you by Disney Plus. <laughs> No, not really. We're not allowed. We're, we're actually brought to you by Anchor, but that's a completely different, uh, completely <laughs> wow. different story. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, there we go. Um, yeah, that's that's Soul 2020. Uh, let's get into some other stuff that we have to do this episode. <laughs> what we watched in j- j- January. More like what we get to do, not what we have to do. Am I right, Whoa. Micah? Am I right, Micah? Whoa, that's deep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Welcome to the recently logged What We Watched. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, uh, this week, we uh, we watched a few things. Actually, uh, <laughs> I watched uh, a lot of things. Too. Well, actually. <laughs> no, no, okay. All right, I don't know what the heck that was. <laughs> Micah's, Micah's trying to do the opening bits. That's my shtick. <laughs> <laughs> get uh, your own shit. Get your own life. Get your own life. <laughs> All right. Yeah. For those of you who are new to the podcast, since we're still early in season three, yeah, yeah, uh, we do a segment at the end where we just talk about what we watched in the week, uh, in yeah, between since, each since episode. the last episode, pretty much. And uh, for me, uh, since I'm doing another big video on my channel in which I had to watch a bunch of movies, I'm not going to talk about those movies too in depth. But I think you'll be able to pick up on what they are if you pay attention. <laughs> yeah, I only watched I only watched seven movies if you don't count Soul since the last one, two, episode. Three, so. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen things. Yeah, and most most of these viewings were with you. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, All right. Do we want to start right yeah. off with the first of January? What did we I mean watch? February. What did we watch on the first of February, Micah? We watched. Zootopia, Zootopia, where anyone can be anything. <laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah, we we watched it. 
And oopsie number three. Oopsie <laughs> number three. Z. Uh, yeah, I think this was my third time watching it. Maybe fourth. Probably my I fourth. Don't know. I've probably watched it more, but um, oh, you've watched it a bunch more times. Zootopia than I have. is such a fun movie. It really is. It's, it's like, a fun little movie. Like I don't think it's like amazing, outstanding, <laughs> or anything, but it's such a fun. Like I, I would turn this on just about any time. It's one of my favorite of the newer. I like uh, it. I like it better. Honestly, I, it's sad that I've liked most of Disney animations stuff better than most Pixar movies. Right. As of late. Like this, this and like Wreck It Ralph and stuff like that are honestly Bro, better Wreck-It than Ralph. a lot of recent. Uh... Wreck It Ralph freaking rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Let yeah. me just say, like Zootopia, Judy Hopps is great. Nick Wilde's great. Heck yeah. Yeah, it's all it's all good. <laughs> I gave it. Uh, <laughs> I gave it three and a half stars. It's so fun. I did. I did give it a like. But also in my review that I left for it, uh, I said the universe increasingly makes less sense <laughs> as really I pay does. more attention to the small details. It really does. The more the more you think about like the economy and stuff in in politics inside Zootopia's universe, it doesn't really it make doesn't much make sense. sense. Uh, also on the first, I watched Princess Mononoke. Heck yeah! Which Frick I gave yeah. five stars. It's probably my favorite Ghibli movie. I wish I could just insert those little like knife swipe sound effects. The little. <laughs> One of my favorite parts of that movie right. is just the little sound effects. <laughs> Dang. It's so good. sick, not gonna lie. So good. Uh, it's one of my favorite animated movies ever, probably. Um, well, good for you, Micah. I got a poster of it over my I bed. I got a poster. <laughs> <laughs> I fall asleep to San every night. Wow. Oh, well, like, I don't know if I like that. <laughs> uh, then I watched... Um, uh, <laughs> Oh boy! I watched <laughs> Ratatouille, the TikTok musical. Oh my gosh! Um, Ram again. This was for this is for channel reasons. Uh, video uh, actually a video review on this coming very soon. Uh, I'm working on it <laughs> currently. So yeah, I actually think that'll be interesting. Sh- you should go check that out. <laughs> I really have tempted to do like an epi- like a double feature episode or something where we talk about this for like half an episode because it doesn't deserve a no episode. but it's such an interesting but it's thing so to interesting talk to talk yeah, about yeah I'm, I'm glad to bring my perspective <laughs> perspective to the uh to the movie or yeah. not movie show uh but yeah uh <laughs> then on the second what did we watch we right watched now? the netflix original question mark yeah, yes so. Uh, Extinction came out in 2018. Directed by Ben Young. Uh, Young with, heck yeah. With Michael Pena. Heck yeah. And um, uh, Mean Girls Girl. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that, yeah. Lizzie, Lizzie Kaplan. Um, also featured in Ten Clover... I mean, not Ten Clover... Cloverfield. I was about to say, I, I, I was pretty sure <laughs> that was someone else. I was <laughs> just thinking of Ten Cloverfield Lane because it's better. <laughs> it is much better. Um, but yeah, uh, I actually enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, I remember seeing trailers for it back when it first came out, mm. and I was like, that looks kind of lame. And I mean, to an extent, it was. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, it was actually pretty cool. I, I have to say, though, I was kind of like, like I was in the middle of kind of like a like a kind of deep, big <laughs> conversation while I was watching this. So my attention was not 100% on the movie. <laughs> But like from what I got of it, it was just kind of like fine. You yeah, know, no, I gave it, it. I gave it two and a half stars. Honestly, honestly, uh, it's not really anything to write home about outside of its uh, pretty cool like concept. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty much just Blade Runner, but lame, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I I still enjoyed it though. Yeah, I gave it a like. Good I'm not times. Sure you wa- yeah, you watched this one on the third technically that night of that the second. very same night what did we what did we watch Remy? we watched my neighbors the yamadas yeah. which i really really loved which i thought was okay <laughs> wow you um, would. i gave it three and a half not stars. a not a not a comic book movie guy micah no i like comic book <laughs> movies i just thought this was kind of I, I don't know it didn't really work that as well as i would have liked for me Dang, it didn't bro. like it, it kept my attention the whole time but at the same time i just really was like Especially by the end, I was like, well, I hope this will be over soon. The third, like, the last third of it is a little rough, but honestly, I think outside of that, it's it's a, it's a, it's a very cool, like, mood piece. No, I, I definitely, I still think it's good. I just was like, uh, kind of by the end, I think it's a little too long. Understandable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like but I yeah, said, no, I, 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 I really loved it. <laughs> uh, it's one of my favorite Ghibli movies now. 
Uh, it is not one of mine. <laughs> uh, then on the third, we watched Spirited Away. Heck yeah. Ooh. Can I get a heck yeah? I've been trying to rewatch this thing for like forever. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we just need to put a little clip by, uh, of wolves by Kanye West. <laughs> Spirited wow. Away. Woo! Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, Spirited no. Away is good. It's so good. It's I mean, so freaking good. Everybody knows it's good. It's, <laughs> it's really well done. Micah Film Bro says Spirited Away is good. <laughs> it's it's definitely not my favorite. Um, and I actually think I'm I'm out of the very very few out of people I follow gave it what I gave it. I gave it four and a half, not five. I don't really. It doesn't really get five stars for me. You know, I think it's really really well done, but I just don't think everything in the movie resonates with me as well as I would like it to. <sighs> How could you, Micah? This is my favorite animated movie. <laughs> it's so good. Ethan gave it three stars. Oh no, Ethan, no. <laughs> uh, All right. <laughs> uh, after that, what did you watch anything? Uh, I watched... Well, uh, I mean, obviously you watched something. I watched like, on the third again. Because uh, I watched... Yeah, I watched something else on the, the third. The Cat Returns. Ah, yes, you did watch um, that. Which is a whack a little movie whack a do i really like it i think it's so much fun it's so I, if it was any longer than it was i would not like it oh but gosh. it's like the shortest ghibli movie i think made and it's so weird and it's just fun why is why do i feel like you would have written this movie mike if it wasn't cats i would have written this yeah movie. like like the baron you would have written that character Dude, the baron is so sick you yeah, can't see, tell me that see, the Baron is not no, sick. He's he's just kind of weird. No, you got you cannot tell me that the Baron is not <laughs> sick. He makes great tea. He dresses sharp. Dude, this wow. man class. class. Dare one say. <laughs> Dare one say class. Class. <laughs> wow. The Baron is sick. I don't care what you say. I gave it three and a half well, stars. Micah may have watched the dumb cat movie. I watched the dumb dog movie. Ayo. <laughs> the we ugly dog. We watched them at the same time, actually. <laughs> yeah, the ugly dog. Because I didn't want to watch the ugly dog. Um, really, the only upside to this movie. I mean, not the only. Obviously, it was. It was a fine. It was a perfectly passable movie. Um, but really, the only big upside is that there were cute little dogs in it. <laughs> the dogsons. The cute. The dogsons are so adorable. And but we, they and we have a dogson. But they 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 just are the the it just immediately gets canceled out by the fact that they're like malicious villains in this movie. Right. I know. I didn't even watch the movie, and I'm like, wait a minute, the dogsons, the dogsons are the, are bad, the guys? bad guys. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, dang, they're the cutest dogs ever. And dogsons are so cute. They have the little scrunchy face. Right. That's. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, disappointing. But yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't like it. <laughs> then on the fourth, we watched How Woo's Moving How, Castle. Woo, 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 woo. In uh, Woo, in Woo, in Woo's Moving Castle, Rebby. I don't. I don't know about that one. Um, and How's Moving Castle is a masterpiece, by the way. Uh, um, and you should go you could say that. You yeah. should go watch uh, Bread Sword's video on How's Moving Castle is a masterpiece. <laughs> Bread Sword's video is better than How's Moving Castle. Wow. Okay. That's that's low. I gave it four and a half. Um, I I love How's Moving Castle. I mean, I can see. I can. See, it, it definitely is good. It definitely has a it has something to say. It is good. It has Dude, good the characters. Only, the only problem with it is its <laughs> pacing in the third act. It's pacing in the third act that's is the, abysmal. <laughs> that's the only problem with it, though. Come on. Uh, I don't know. I just have never really gotten into it that much. It's really funny, though. Like, it's one of the funniest Ghibli movies out there, I think. Right, it's it's good. We actually did an episode on it. Though, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Duh. Wow. I don't, I'm like. I feel like I need to explain my thoughts on House Movie Castle, but we've already done an episode on it. It's so very, it doesn't really very matter. Very good. Uh, then on the sixth, yes. the freaking sixth, freaking freaking sixth, of we February. watched. Ryan Johnson's freaking masterpiece for the first time. Brick. The other masterpiece, that is. Oh, wow. His <laughs> other other masterpiece. Brick. Whoops. Uh, his first feature-length movie in, oh my goodness. Freaking rocks. <laughs> Bro, this is... Uh, I put this in my four, top four favorites. This was a first watch. It may not stay there. We need to do a Brick like, episode. like, oh my gosh, Brick. We need to do a Brick episode. I need to buy this movie. We, like, yeah, yeah, I was about today. to say, we need to, we need to buy the Blu-ray ASAP. <laughs> Brick. Though. This is like this is like the best budget filmmaking I have ever seen. Right. In this my had life. A, this had a five hundred thousand dollar budget and everything you can tell. <laughs> I guarantee most of that money went into actors. 
<laughs> like everything is so it's low insane, budget, but everything bro. looks so good. It the looks story good. is so well done. It sounds good. The dialogue. The performances are great. The dialogue. The dialogue is so good. The dialogue is outstanding. The editing. Oh my Joseph gosh. Joseph Gordon Levitt's character <laughs> is probably the best character I've seen him do ever. <laughs> Bro, I swear, the editing in this changed my life. <laughs> and I'm not over yeah. I am. I'm very happy that it's in my top four favorites. Uh, five stars, for sure. Um, Ryan yeah. Johnson needs to come back to this. It's my favorite Ryan Johnson movie. Ryan jo- I, I prefer it over Knives Out. I don't now. know. I don't have... I, it's... I even wrote that in my review. <laughs> and now I have both Knives Out and Brick in my four favorites, and I don't know which one I like more. you got to put The Last Jedi up I've there seen, now, No, Micah. I'm not putting The Last Jedi up there. I'm not putting uh, Corporate Ryan Johnson corporate up there. Corporate Ryan Johnson. You want, you want crazy Ryan Johnson. I want, you want uh, indie Ryan I Johnson. I want indie Ryan Johnson. I want original <laughs> Ryan Johnson. I want Knives Out and Brick Ryan Johnson. Are you going to put Evil Demon Golf Ball from Hell on there? I am. <laughs> actually really want to watch that. I know. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> uh... But, um, yeah, I don't know. Because, see, I've watched Knives Out, uh, like, 14 times, and it's <laughs> and I still like it as much as I do. So I have to do that with Brick now I to see if it holds. I can't wait to watch Brick, man. I can't, I can't wait to re it. Dude, it's it. so good. Like, it's like so and for a mystery, good. I think it's going to be so cool watching it again. Yeah, no, definitely. But, man, Brick. Go watch Brick. Go watch Brick, yeah. It's on uh, Amazon Prime at the moment, I believe. Yeah, go watch Brick. That's the moral. Of the the story. moral of the story: If you're old enough to watch Brick, watch Brick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then anyway, uh, also on the sixth, uh, I watched uh, Tales from Earth Sea. Tales from um, Earth Sea. Which I like. It's not the greatest from <laughs> Studio Ghibli, but I like it nope. quite a bit. I think it accomplishes some good stuff. Uh, I gave it three and a half stars. Then I watched Ponyo, 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 Fishy in the Sea on the sixth. And this is actually one of my favorite of Hayao Miyazaki's later movies. Um, Ponyo is such a magical atmosphere. And like, yeah, Ponyo, man. And <laughs> hot take, it's better than Totoro. Um, no, I not. gave it four stars. It's not better. Then on the seventh, I watched The Secret World of Arietti, uh, which I don't like, and I gave two and a half stars. <laughs> which I don't like. <laughs> then on the seventh, I also watched From Up on Poppy Hill, which I do like, and I gave three and a half stars. Nothing, nothing compares to uh, the uh, initial anxiety of Poppy Hill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching it for the first time. <laughs> you're like, uh, uh, uh you're uh. like, uh, uh. <laughs> but then it all turns out just okay. fine, I guess. <laughs> when, he, when they come up, they're like, I don't care. I'm going to always feel this way. You're like, uh, uh what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you just what, say? What, what did you just write down? Hayao Miyazaki Hayao who worked Mi- on the screenplay for this. <laughs> Hayao Miyazaki is over party, Mike. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Anyway, that's what I watched. And, if you, and yeah. if you didn't pick up what my uh, what a video is is going to be from me, then <laughs> either you really don't know anything about those movies I just mentioned, or you weren't paying attention. Um, one thing. Uh, let's let's go into our outro, Michael. Here we go. We're gonna we're gonna wrap this up in a nice little bow. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I wanted to bring up like a, oh, a little wanted, you little wanted, you wanted a, a little nugget. I wanted to bring up this, uh, this nugget. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna nugget. we're gonna turn it down. We're gonna be a bit more serious. <laughs> uh, I, it occurred to me that we don't have the usual open like when the, when there's usually when usually when there's a co-host situation on a podcast. At the beginning, they're like, "So what did you do this week?" <laughs> but then we already know what well, we did. Here's the thing: <laughs> we live in the same house. In the same house. We work practically in the same space. Because I was gonna be like, at because like I was I was down here beforehand. You were you were still like sleeping on the couch, <laughs> and I was like, what if we introduce a new segment where we talk about what we did this week? And then I'm like, wait a minute, we already know what we did this week. <laughs> we could tell the people. What we, we that's did. true. I did my college ornithology class. Hey, uh, I worked on my video. <laughs> Is that it? And I went to church. You went to church. Wow. <laughs> oh, and I it hung, must be it must be. <laughs> and I hung out with friends. That's wait, about wait, it. Wait, is it a holiday or something? <laughs> did I miss? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did this week. What did I do this week? Uh, I started. I started some freelancing projects. I'm trying to design a logo. Um, designing some cool uh, like cards. Like, wow, I didn't know that about you. <laughs> um, what else? What else did I do this week? Uh, I'm trying to. I started trying to produce a album. 
on uh, on the side. It's it's not really the, coming li- together. the lyrical genius because <laughs> I there. have because I have no prior musical experience except for I took one piano class lyri- when I was like six. The, <laughs> lyri- the lyrical genius is there. No, he's it's, writing, it's, it's he's, purely an instrument. He's spewing out bars. <laughs> spewing these bars. He's a he's got better <laughs> better uh, better bars than Kanye. That's not hard. <laughs> oh dang! <laughs> dang. <laughs> uh, dark twisted fantasy, Kanye. Ooh, okay, that is hard. <laughs> that was when he actually like sat down and took time to write his <laughs> his lyrics instead of just freestyling in the booth like he usually did. Uh, uh but yeah. Uh, what else did I do this? I, I mean, I, I I listened to a lot of music this week. <laughs> I, I always listen to a lot of music. I listen to a lot of music. Yeah, I don't. Uh, oh, oh, here we go. What? Um. <laughs> On Overwatch, oh my I'm, an God. Avid, I'm an avid Overwatch player. Uh, I uh, started playing ranked capture the flag mode and did way too well <laughs> to feel happy. Wow! <laughs> like, like I'm pretty decent. Like, I'm I'm gold in uh, yeah. He's a in pretty normal, pretty, pretty all right. It's Overwatch not player. And it's not amazing, obviously, for anybody who knows how gold like Overwatch's ranks go. I'm not even to platinum, which I'm so close so close to platinum <laughs> uh but like i'm I'm a decent overwatch player but then i go in and i play capture the flag and i start doing like like really well like i haven't lost a game of competitive <laughs> capture the flag wow and i'm like no 100 percent win 100 percent win ratio <laughs> i'm like no i don't want to <laughs> wow <laughs> you can't make me you can't make me i don't want to be he throws a game <laughs> i don't want to be good at competitive capture the flag <laughs> wow uh, you join the professional league, like a yeah, totally. Professional league capture the flag. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, in fact, I'm gonna start the the owl capture the flag. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Uh, for the for the uninitiated, owl stands for Overwatch League. Yeah. <laughs> Which Overwatch is all one word, so I don't know why it's just. I, I don't know why it's not just all because <laughs> it would be O-L. that sounds stupid <laughs> wow and besides like it's all one word but everybody is like overwatch even though it's, it's like two overwatch. syllables yeah i know all about syllables micah <laughs> i know <all> about <laughs> some call me a syllable expert but yeah that's oh 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 and i got married in skyrim you got... <laughs> <laughs> micah i'm just gonna cut off it i got married jazz music starts i got married in, i got married in skyrim and wow. that's that's a, that was the uh, that but was my you, week but do you love each uh no oh it was it was a business transaction dang it <laughs> well that's life for you i guess <laughs> life's hard in skyrim get married for love wow all right, well, we're probably going to go watch some regular show while I edit this, and uh, we'll see you next week. Yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> Listen yeah. to some jazz, watch Soul, watch Brick. <laughs> Heck yeah, that, that's, the main, that's the main takeaway from this week. So do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>